Well, instead of playing a full A7 chord, like the cowboy chord, like the bar chord, like the up the neck A7, which all of those are great, how about just playing these two notes? Says it all. It's enough to um, say A7 without filling up too much space. So if you're jamming with somebody, if you have a bass player laying down a bass line, maybe you have a lead guitar on top of your, your rhythm, all you got to do is play that, and it sounds like an A7. So it's the two most important notes of an A7. To get to the D7 chord, there's this very convenient trick that we learn along the way. I'm about to show you this trick. You take those two notes, G and C sharp, which were the uh, seventh and the third of the A7, move them down a half step, and they magically become the third and the seventh, inverted, of the uh, D7 chord. F sharp is the third, C is the flatted seventh. And then you move that up a half step from G and C sharp to G sharp and D. Well, that's the third and the seventh of an E seventh chord. So within just one fret of each other, you get these three tritones that outline and uh, give the flavor for the three chords you need for a 12-bar blues, in this case in the key of A, and in this case those chords are A7, D7, and E7. You could just literally play those chords, A7, D7, and E7, and there's nothing wrong with that, but what if you want to do some other stuff? It's hard to grab a full bar chord and play other things at the same time but if you just play a little interval of two chords two notes excuse me uh you got some fingers free to do some other stuff you can add some color tones to that you can play a little lead on top of that get a bass line going some of the great jazz guitar players like uh joe pass and um barney kessel and jim hall and people like that um they knew how to take a little interval like that but add other things to it either add lead lines or add bass lines and uh, that's a whole art that's called the art of chord melody playing. And uh, we'll get into that someday on the guitar, how to do chord melody. So this is useful for a lot of different styles. And then uh, that tritone thing, let's try it. Let's do, instead of a full A7, a full D7, and a full E7, let's just use these intervals. And I'll, I'll spell them out for you again. It's the fifth fret on your D string. It is the sixth fret on your G string. When we go to D7, it's going to be the fourth fret on your D string and the fifth fret on your G string. And then finally the E7 chord, the five chord in the blues, is going to be the sixth fret on your D string and the seventh fret on your G string. So it's going to be this one, this one, and this one. Just enough to make it sound like a chord. All right, here we go. Blues in A. One, two, one, two, three, four. So it's bare bones, it's a little bit uh, unembellished, and by itself might not be enough, but if you add some things to it, like I added a little bass note to my E7 chord to make it fuller, I added some vibrato, uh, I might add like a 13th or something, I might add some color tones, might play a little lead line on top of it, then it gets fuller. But uh, these are really good. These are also good for chord substitutions, and we'll talk about that later in uh, the second half of this video. We'll look at a song called Girl from Ipanema, which uh, Antonio Carlos Jobim, a uh, Brazilian guy in the 60s, wrote this beautiful tune. Everyone knows it, The Girl from Ipanema. It's um, one of those bossa nova standards. And uh, the bridge of that song uses this great tritone substitution. And we will talk about that in the next video. I'm not going to get into that today. Today, I just simply wanted to show you how to take a 12-bar blues in A, which uh, Jimmy Page did in the song Rock and Roll. And instead of playing a full A7 chord, he played that interval, that interval at the fifth and sixth frets for A. Then when it went to the D chord, he did that interval, just down, down one fret. And when it went to the E chord, it went up to the 6th and 7th frets. 
So that Led Zeppelin song uses um, these tritones masterfully. And there's a lot of blues players and rock blues players that, that do that sort of thing. So next time you're going to grab a big full chord and it just doesn't work for you. It doesn't fit the music. Try less. Try to do just a little tritone. Go. Now it might say everything you need it to say with very few notes. So just to wrap it up, what is a tritone? A tritone is the space between two notes, an interval that consists of three whole steps. The space that it takes to get from A to E flat. And it kind of has that dissonant sound. It usually begs for re resolution. Like in The Simpsons or Maria by uh, Leonard Bernstein in West Side Story. It's a dissonant interval. And then you make it resolved. So it's um, an interval that's been used for centuries and centuries, but it's used a lot more these days than perhaps it was in the Dark Ages, in the Middle Ages. But it wasn't banned by the Pope. That's a myth. That is a lie that uh, a lot of people tell, but it's a nice story anyway to talk about it as the devil's interval. All right, get to Lelians. I hope you enjoyed this part one of Tritones, and we will get on to part two after this and uh, dive even deeper into this subject. I'll leave some tabs for you. I'll put a link down below so you can access the tabs and chord diagrams and really study this stuff for yourself at home. And I thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Be sure to like and click that little notify bell. And you'll get notified every time I uh, make a new video. It'll go ding, and you'll know, oh, Jeff's got a new guitar video. Yay. All right, take care. Get to Laylene's. Bye-bye.